taken from my story by Lim Kortong. Um, I'm going to read some parts from uh, a chapter on his mining ventures. And this is taken from page 44. So this is about his uh, first trip to Japan. First trip to Japan. I was 35 when I flew to Japan alone for the first time. Um, in en route, the passenger next to me told me that he was on his way to Japan to see his brother-in-law, uh, Mr. Mark. It so happened that Mr. Mark, who turned up to meet him at the airport, was also the same contact person I was supposed to see in Japan. A fluent Japanese speaker, Mr. Mark agreed to act as my interpreter. <clears throat> at first, the general manager of the Japanese iron mining company refused to see me saying a Chinese would not know how to handle the iron ore business. Undeterred, I waited outside his office every day. Eventually, moved by my sincerity, he called me in. After protracted discussions, he gave me a proposal. We were to bear the airfares and the US dollars 1,500 monthly wages of each of the four mining engineers who would be carrying out a three-month study at our iron uh, at our iron mine. <clears throat> In return, he already promised to give us a 400 million yen loan to support the mining operations. I did not exactly swoon over his generous loan offer, for I was aware that given the very strict foreign exchange controls imposed by the Japanese government then, it was patently impossible for them to arrange such a loan. As a counter a proposal, I asked them to pay for the airfares and wages of the engineers up front, and we would take care of their board and lodging in Malaya. Upon signing an agreement on the sale and purchase of iron ore between us, we would reimburse them for the agreed expenses. This was finally agreed upon, and we struck a deal. This trip to Japan lasted 48 days. But it was well worth it. At the end of the study, the four Japanese mining engineers confirmed that our mine indeed had reached uh, reserves of iron ore.